Why don't we just go ahead and get started? So just quickly, uh, Tim Jones, Senior Director and Solution Innovation Team at Snowflake. Uh, been building apps on Snowflake for uh, the last little over two years, so that's my team's focus. Super excited, met David and the team a little over a year and a half ago, I guess, roughly. And so, David, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Sam. Mm -hmm. uh, David, one of the founders of Honeydew, um, spent last decade in selling data, had a data company doing data acceleration, and now Honeydew, which we are a semantic layer native to Snowflake. Yeah, so very exciting stuff. Yeah. So, and we'll talk a little bit about kind of the background, too, because it's an interesting, if you've heard of the startup challenge, uh, you might recognize Honeydew from that as well. So go ahead and hit the next slide there. And so we have an agenda. Uh, so please make, a, make sure you take a look at this, write it down. We're going to ask questions later to see if you followed along. Uh, or maybe not. We'll see what happens. So let's go through and go, let's go ahead and hit it, right? So for those who didn't come just to see Honeydew, can you kind of give us a what honeydew is besides a delicious, tasty melon in one minute? Which is much better than cantaloupes. Yes, Remember cantaloupe that. bad, honeydew good, just for anybody who's there. All right, so actually maybe I'll start with how we, how we started, how we even got to building honeydew. Um, because for us, uh, my co-founders and I, the realization was that people consolidate their data on the data cloud on Snowflake, have this ability to have every step of a customer journey, every facet of a transaction all in one place. So you enable different teams, you enable different use cases, you enable to see the whole life cycle of second that happens once you consolidate the data. So for example, um, for example, um, all my user events flow into my Snowflake. But then, and that's the thing that we thought about, how do you enable counting those things, say counting active users in a way that supports the organization? Because everything is on Snowflake. Your marketing teams uh, want to run a self-service Tableau operation. Your finance teams just want Excel's refreshed live of metrics on Snowflake. Your data science wants to build an A-B test in Python. Every one of them becomes a duplication of how you count stuff. And in different implementation, a duplication of logic, a duplication of data. And you might have a source for data, but you actually have a single source of truth. So I said, why not move that? Why not take this basic concept of defining business logic and move it into Snowflake itself in a way that can serve all those tools, keeping the flexibility, keeping the native user experience? Or just like in a high level, move from a point where your Snowflake is a, point, is a place for all your shared data in the organization to having a shared logic sync source of truth. So um, this is part of, I think this is really fascinating. <laughs> so the way we met initially was a little over a year ago, connected, and uh, the, the Honeydew team has really joined the startup challenge. And then the, the way they built that app was it started as a connected app. So connected app, for those who are not familiar with uh, Snowflake terminology, is essentially any, something that lives in the cloud or lives somewhere and talks into Snowflake in order to connect and be part of an application. That's our nomenclature. If you Google it, you're probably not going to find it anywhere. But where do we go from there? So how do we start? Yeah, because and essentially this is why, why we start. And like, a lot of tools operate that way. They connect yeah. to Snowflake, move data, and provide the service on top of it, um, even in other semantic layers. Um, and when you start from that, you lose, essentially create a copy. And Snowflake enabled the native application interface. That means that data stays in place. And instead of moving it around, you just have an external connectivity to a service, speedballing here a semantic compiler, um, providing an API to be able to leverage your Snowflake. If you go ahead and go to the next, so, so I think it's really, so, so this is kind of the why, right? So you start with a connected app, so you connect that layer in. So how do you actually integrate it? I don't think you'll hear this as an official term, but like a hybrid app. Like how can you still have your connected layer and actually tie that together with a native app? And why would you do that? And so both of these are, why do we stay at home? So like, what, David, you want to kind of talk about what, how you thought about this when you're building this? Yeah, app? sure. I think that data, storing data doesn't come along. Because when you store data, you start to think about um, who can access it. 
Start creating roles and, secu and, uh, and security around it. You might be tagging PII data in it. You might start to attaching some budget quotas. Um, there are services that specific to Snowflake on that data, like search service. Um, so all of that becomes about part of what you have. It's not just the data. It's everything that accompanies it. Um, and the idea, at least from our Honeydew perspective, of a native app is how do you enable that investment to be leveraged for a semantic layer, to be leveraged for a different services. It's true for us. That's true for other folks building native apps. And like, even think of like an example, which you might not think about as a connected app. Think about Power BI service. So you have Power BI dashboards running on Snowflake through Fabric that actually allowing data from Snowflake, providing a service of dashboarding on top of it. Yep. And it's, it's a type of a connected app. It is. Um, though when you do that, where do you manage your security? Where do you manage who has access to that? Um, how do you do tagging? How do you do? Suddenly you have a whole duplicate area that you already have built that in Snowflake. Yeah, you've integrated it, and you've taken your service or attack area, if you think of it from a security perspective, and you've doubled it because you have two different areas that you could do that. So some of the cool things with like native apps around how you can build those for those who are learning about them are as part of a native app, you can publish that native app into a consumer account, and you as the provider who publishes that get to A, select what they can see, whether that be logic, whether that be the data that you supply with it. You control that. You also, uh, from a consumer side, the consumer has uh, control over what roles they at, use to access that. So there's controls on both sides of that uh, equation. And that's part of the reason you also keep it there. Because once you start to go to a third party, again, you start to increase the complexity of what you're trying to build. So, and you get consolidated billing. So this is our other piece here. So do you want me to talk about this one? No, I can. You yeah. got it? All right. Um, now, native apps today, we, we as you think of place to consolidate your data. Mm -hmm. The Snowflake also becomes a place that we can also run compute off. And I think for us, part of the next step is also leveraging that capability. For those who haven't heard, native apps, uh, our Snowpark container services is going to be available as an object inside of your native application. And so you know, the very kind of cool part about that is if you have something that can run in a container, great. You can drop it in there, whether that's something uh, you guys, have you guys heard of, I'm just curious, has anyone heard of AI? Has that come up at all <laughs> recently? OK, good. So, if you want to run like an LLM or something like that inside of there, great. What I think is also cool is maybe you want to run a React front end. Maybe you want to put something in front of that that allows you to have a really more of a true application type experience. You can put that in there. You can drop basically anything you can containerize into that and run it, package it as a native app, and push it to your consumers. And again, you're now consolidating all that inside of that native app framework, and you get all the governance, security, and all those types of things as well. That's true for us as well. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, all right, so let's maybe dive, as it's a technical session, a bit in, into the technical part of the session. OK. Uh, which is what goes into the native app running through an external service. Um, yeah, <laughs> so the Snowpark external access is essentially uh, the ability to call out from within Snowflake to a public REST API. I say public because, I mean, technically you can hit any API, but there has to be a public endpoint for you to be able to hit it. So what you could do with that, what that means is within an application, and whether it be in an application or just inside of Snowflake, you can actually do a push or a pull of data or make a request out just based on an API call. Uh, I think you, if you haven't played around with it, it is super powerful. Uh, and what it allows you to do authentication, authorization, all those types of things that you would do through that. My team is building this with a lot of folks, although the Honeydew folks uh, snuck under my radar and got it done first, which Sorry. is... No, perfectly <laughs> cool. Uh, and the cool thing, too, is the way we built this into the native app, um, a lot of times you hear about Streamlit and having a UI on the front of it. So Honeydew didn't do that. They actually integrated the native app component in that external access API call. Basically, You're spoiling my demo. Yeah, Man. sorry. All right, sorry, I'm killing it. So I will, uh, yeah, but that's external access in a nutshell, is how do you actually call out, hit APIs, um, hey, maybe you want to hit Slack and send out an alert. Great, you can do that using that REST API call. All sorts of really powerful things you can do with that. So, um, just to highlight our use case, so um, different places to get to native app, maybe your Snow site, the Snowflake IDE, 
um, or Snowflake connector or Snowflake connection. Um, they go into the Snowflake native app, which uh, runs in Snowflake. Um, the external API gateway, which manages the access, goes actually to more than one API under the hood. Uh, one yep. of them is a semantic compiler uh, that, that takes care of uh, building the queries. Another one, for example, is Git. As the semantics people define how revenue is, it's actually stored in a Git repository. So that's also accessible to the native app. Um, and all of that happens within that Snowflake box. It, and one thing I want to call out too on here is you see external API gateway. Uh, and if you're familiar with external functions where you used to have to set up, go to AWS and set up an API gateway and then you'd call a Lambda function or something like that, different. Like this is actually a direct API call. The external API gateway is what's built into Snowflake that allows you to make an external connection and build that two-way connection between Snowflake and whatever that REST API endpoint is, which is if you've ever done an external function, this is a much simpler way to do it, and especially when you need to work with a third party or a consumer, because trying to get them to set up an external function is very complicated and time consuming. Whereas in this case, it's just accept it when you install, and away it goes. Runs without a problem. So are we ready yeah. for the good stuff? I hope we do. OK, we're going to do a demo. So all right, Dave, I'll turn it over to yeah, you. Yeah, you set the very high I set the bar very yeah, high yeah, yeah. or very low, but there's no middle ground. So let's yeah, no, no expectations there. All right, excellent. So what you see here is um, a control panel of Honeydew, the semantic layer, on top of a schema called Tasty Bytes, essentially a restaurant chain that has business entities like orders, trucks moving things around, locations where they sell, customers. Um, all of that takes about an hour to set up. Um, and the part that inc included here is how your data maps into those entities and how they connect um, with help of things like Calculations, say a revenue metric. The way we calculate order cost is by, we should show it, by multiplying quantity by the uh, cost of goods involved, which is the foundation. Now, no one actually, like from a user perspective, cares about that much. Right. What they care is about being able to use those things within the context of their tool, within their question. They want to get that metric and trust it, but happen from there. Um, now, you spoiled my demo. So, yeah, I, I know. So, what are your thoughts? Um, why not connect Cortex LM on top of Honeydew to enable to talk with data on trusted metrics, which is a demo that you're going to see? We'll just wake it up. So, oh, there we go. So, Streamlit waking up. Um, so, folks, too, if you haven't seen Streamlit before, if you have seen Streamlit and Snowflake, uh, new versions just released over the last uh, week went to GA, so newer versions of Streamlit. A lot of the things everybody's been asking for are starting to show up, especially around being able to theme it and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's let's ask a question. Menu items and their profit margins for barbecues in Seattle. My uh, guess is nothing's going to come back because there's no barbecue in Seattle. Anyone with me? I'm from Kansas City. So okay, there we go. All right, good. We'll see what happens. See if I'm wrong. Got All it. right, so what's happening there? Um, the Streamlit application talks with the native app in few APIs. First, it asks for the list of metrics that are approved for using an AI. The list of dimensional metrics that are 11, coming from the schema. Then, and it was fast, uh, it goes to Honeydew and asks it to actually run a query generated by the LLM with correct information. So that's, let's take a look at the data before we dive into that further. Drinks are a high profit. Uh, uh, item here. Um, salads, it's just lettuce. It's just an overpriced lettuce. Um, nothing more, just charge it for the sauce. Um, and I think that two, two meat plates are more efficient than, uh, less efficient than three meat uh, plates. So we've got some insights, we've got insight from English. Now, what happens underneath? Um, the LLM, which, by the way, it's live and you can go to our booth uh, afterwards, go and play with it. Um, and it's also open source. Um, you can go and um, the LM generate a question. Said, I want to have my profit margin metric, my menu items, and with a couple of filters, figuring it out from the semantics and provider. We uh, can go just pick a bit under the hood. It created a query that looks something like that, which is uh, a native application query that goes and asks for data using Honeydew. And this is the native app component, right? So this is that external access call 
that is layered underneath that API call from the, uh, for the AI query. While the actual query that get and run on Snowflake, so you can see it's SQL here, is obviously much more complex because it had to go through a set of different tables, apply different filters, apply different joins, know how profit margin is defined, make sure it's calculated correctly in that particular context. All of that is happening by the semantic layer itself. So this is a generated query, though not generated by Cortex, but generated by Honeydew after a user question coming from Cortex LLM. Yep. We, we incorporated, I think what you're going to start to see if you haven't figured this out, I'm sure everybody, I may be late to the game, is that AI, Cortex, all those types of things. A couple things I would point out are native apps don't have to be complex to be powerful, like to be able to go drive that type of work. Uh, also, leveraging, like this is leveraging native Snowflake capabilities from Cortex to be able to go drive this from an LLM perspective. And you can incorporate that into native apps as well. And that runs in your consumer's accounts and does all the, the cool stuff that you can do with Cortex inside of that space. We are at time. We're going to wrap up. Thank you, everybody.